Hello, Art490. Welcome to week two. Uh, great meeting everyone today. Apologies to the few of you who we did not get a chance to speak with. We'll have you introduced next week. Um, here's our two activities for week two. We want to work on menus and viewer profiles. So let me start with menus. Um, what's our homepage going to look like? It should probably start with your name, Glenn Zuckman. Underneath your name, maybe half the size, is what you do. Uh, painting, graphic design, character design, illustration, user interfaces, something like that. And then, so it's name, title, and then your menu. Um, a lot of artists on their menu will put portfolio or work. These are really useless words. They don't inform. Um, if you think about it, you're looking at someone's website, you want to know if they can uh, do something useful for you, and we give them the word portfolio or the word work, which doesn't actually tell them what you do. It tells them, if you click this and go to yet another page, then I will start telling you what I do. So portfolio, work, bad words. Just like as we said, um, you know, don't call yourself an artist probably because uh, you know, a graphic design, character design, etc., is more specific. An engineer would say civil engineer, electrical engineer. It's it's more clarity. It's more precise. Try to always remember when we make these websites. You know, you put hours into your website, paying attention to the details, and you, we can kind of start to think that somebody is going to put that kind of time in, looking at our website, trying to understand what we do. But that's not the way people use websites. Think about your own use of websites. You don't stare at a website for hours or minutes trying to understand what this person does. You look at a website for one second and you think, is this what I'm looking for? Read on, or is this not what I'm looking for? Hit the back button already. It's very fast. So we have to have clarity and precision. It's fine to make it clear to people who don't need us that they don't need us. That's not a problem. What's really important is that if you are the right fit for someone, it's clear and it's upfront and it's really easy for them to understand that right away. So if I'm a graphic designer, having a menu button called portfolio or website doesn't tell them about my graphic design. Instead, think up three or four category words that can be your menu. So maybe it's typography or calligraphy, identity systems, branding, packaging, posters. So even before they click, they already start to see that I'm working in these graphic design areas that they're interested in, that are useful to them. So the menu not only is functional, like you can click a button, but it's also an outline that tells them what they have in store in this website and looking at that menu some people might say these aren't the things i want and leave that's fine but other people will say this is exactly what i want i need an identity system let me click that button so portfolio work bad more specific words pick up three or four categories within your area that you can show some work in uh, one more thing about our home pages, since we're talking about them, you don't have to put anything there this week, but uh, might as well have it in mind. Um, in newspapers, we print the newspaper, we fold it in half and we stick it, the physical newspaper, uh, we stick it in a rack on a street corner and someone can walk up, look through the little plastic window and see a photo and a headline and say, whoa, that happened today, I better buy this newspaper and read it. Um, so being on the front page of the LA Times or the front page of the New York Times is great, but if you're on the bottom half of the front page, nobody looking through the little plastic window can see that story. So being on the top half of the front page is really, really great. And we call that, because the newspaper is folded in half, we call that above the fold. Well, even though we're making websites and they're digital and there's no print and there's no ink, that term persists. We still call it above the fold. On a website, it means what can I see before I have to scroll? And just like we don't want to use a word like portfolio because it doesn't tell people anything, we want to use a word like identity systems, branding, packaging, and so on, um, that tell people something. We don't want to have to make someone scroll to see your work. 
So don't, you know, design a website that has like the giant word hello in, in huge type that takes up the most precious real estate there is above the fold on your homepage. Above the fold should be your work, okay? So it's name, what you do, menu, and then get some art above the fold. Maybe one big image, maybe several smaller images, but that's prob probably what almost all of us want on our homepage. Okay, so that's menus, that's some thoughts about the homepage. So go ahead and set up your menu this week. The second thing I'd like you to do this week is work on a viewer profile. So there, there is no way to design a website with no audience in mind. Do I want a website with white type on a black background? Do I want a website with black type on a white background? Which one is better? There is no better. Uh, there is speaking to a specific audience. So you have to know who you're speaking to in order to be able to make informed, appropriate design choices. Um, so what we're gonna do is a little bit of research, which we talked about in class today. So try to find some animation studios, some advertising agencies, some design shops, some art galleries, uh, that you might like to connect with and identify a curator at the art gallery, an HR director at the animation studio, a creative director at the ad agency, a person who can be kind of a template, a role model for you to think about as you're making design choices for your website. And the way I'd like to present that, normally a viewer profile is kind of like a short essay, like you write out a profile of a person. Um, we're kind of going to do that, but instead of, you know, formally making a, a post or a, an essay, let's go ahead and use Discord, the week two channel that I've posted on Discord. And you can kind of post bits through the week as you research. So maybe get a name or get an art gallery or an animation studio that you're interested in, post that, and then try to find a person and then learn a little bit about them. You know, what's their background? Where did they go to school? What do they do? You don't have to focus too much on personal details like hobbies and things, but throwing that in can kind of round out a person as you try to think about them and decide choices. Um, so when you're designing your website or also when you're presenting your work on your website, you want to be able to explain your choices and you know why they work. Again, there is no correct choice in the abstract. There are choices that meet specific design criteria. So for example, in typography, the X height, the, the, the height of like, if you have a lowercase b, how tall is the bowl? How tall is the ascender? Um, fonts with small X heights are more stylish and elegant, but they're harder to read. Fonts with large X heights are easier to read, but they feel more like a first grade reader. They're not so sophisticated. So if you're designing a newsletter for uh, a group of senior citizens, you would probably choose a font with a large X height because you want to make sure these people whose vision may not be that great can easily read the newsletter. If you're designing uh, a brochure for young urban professionals, you don't want them to be put off by the, by the kind of childish large X height. You probably choose a font with a small X height. So when you make choices, you have to know who those choices are for. That's how you know what the appropriate, the appropriate aesthetic choice is. So when you're going to present work on your website, you should talk about the choices and why you make them. But also to make the website itself, you also need to have an audience in mind, not an abstract website for no one, but a site for someone. So that's the viewer profile. So this week, just try to find a specific person to have in mind. Um, that maybe you, you know, if we're, if we're lucky, maybe you'll be interviewing with that person in June. Uh, but, you know, or maybe you won't, <laughs> but let's use them as your model for you making the choices of how to present your content on your website this semester. So go ahead and use the, the week two discord channel and put as much information as you can about some specific person there this week. Um, shout on discord, uh, or email if you have questions about anything or if I can help with anything. And I'm also happy to jump on zoom and have a, a face-to-face -face or video-to-video -video chat if you want to talk about anything. Have a great week. See you online.